Welcome back to Reference Wednesday. Today I'm going to be doing some gesture drawing with some chill music and you can just join in and warm up and draw with me. Okay, so I'm going to do some two minute poses. I'm just going to try and do these fairly quick though. Trying to pay close attention to what side of the plane is showing. This is twisting quite heavily, and the pelvis is tilting downwards. When you hear the beep, it'll be the end of the end of the drawing. This particular pose. This is just a warm up pose. I think this is my first time actually drawing today, so this is a bit of a to the next post um so we're looking at a worm's eye view it's fairly on point perspective make these legs very big Just start drawing there. Without even looking at the reference. Make sure to keep on looking at your reference. Don't make the same mistake I did. Pay attention to this. The hand kind of... It's a funny trapezoid shape. This is going to be some extreme foreshortening as as i said before it's a worm's eye view so you, i'm looking up at the planes so everything that's getting drawn here is above the horizon line apart from maybe the feet but they're also coming forward in the perspective grid i'm just gonna try and place these in Okay, next pose. It's a good pose. It's a nice aggressive C shape. Now I'm going to put in a slight twist here. To the box. Just to practice a little bit of my twisting. Her head is kind of looking backwards on itself. 
The leg is nice and long and straight. And then we got the other leg. Bunched up on the other side. And then that curves down into a point. And I'll just kind of leave it at a point. Then we have uh, this arm rotating. I think I made that a bit touch too long. So you'll see the bottom plane of this because it's kind of, yet again, a little bit of a worm's eye view on this one. Get a little bit of the hand on the other side. Well, you won't see it. Skip this one. More of the same. This one will do it nice. So this one's got some nice squash and stretch. This is the first time I'm going to add the ribs. Starting to lay in a bit of detail now. This leg is foreshortened. make this all into one contiguous shape. And make that a straight line into another straight line. Into a straight line. Into like a cubey shape. Then I'm going to add a little bit of a pinch here. A stretch of the belly button. The rib cage is kind of rolling down this way, shoulders up, shoulders down, the head is kind of here, and then our rough tubes. This is a another womb's eye view. I'm gonna take a pause at this one just so I can try and have a look at it for a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna start with my rib cage. Gonna twist in like this. The head is up here. I'm going to stop after this one and I'm going to turn this into a character shape. So I'm going to attempt to use some shape language in this pose to make an interesting character.
this leg is full shortened, I'm not just drawing a massive. Okay, just final steps, adding in these little feet. Okay, now I'm going to add in the breast. adding in the rear delt and the latissimus dorsi and this kind of leads into the lower back and into this hip and then I'm going to draw the underwear line no faces facing that way and what we'll do is I'm going to turn this into a cube so it's nice and easy to understand when I do my character stuff in a second. Push this back in space. It's a sharp it's a sharper transition than that. So the eye line's more to the left here. And then you get this cylinder. The kind of lies here. However, the pectoral muscles cover in that. And you also see a little bit of the pectoral muscle there. And then the trapezius, trapezius, tricep is then covering that. Okay. And I think we'll call that one done. Right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer, I'm going to shimmy across, and I'm going to try and push the proportions of this a little bit. So, I'm going to make the rib cage small. And make the head my small shape. And then I'm going to make my hips, which are tilting downwards, by the way, my big shape. They're tilting downwards and turning left. You can see this side of the, the box. I'm going to make them my bigger shape. And then all my legs. I'm going to separate it out as my bigger shape. It's going to be this. Just so I'm going to have a tree trunk type shape. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Okay, and that's going to be my knees and thighs. And then I'm going to do my medium shape which is just going to be a and then i'm going to get at just that oh don't know why that happened and then i'm going to add my small shape which is going to be just a small little box And another little box for this foot. 
and I'm going to do the exact same process for her arms. So this one's going to be here. This one's going to be here. A little bit more covered. We'll have that pectoral muscle rolling up there then. Right off the rip, I think it needs to go more further this way. And then this one kind of rolls here too. Up into the shoulder. So that just gives me some guidelines in my head. Way to follow. We know this is from underneath. I'm going to add a little triangle. Eye line. Okay, I'm going to make... The upper arm, a try a small shape. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Okay, there's my small shape. Now, this is gonna be my big shape, but it's foreshadowed, so this is not gonna work because it's gonna look smaller realistically than this. Unless I make all of this one shape. And then I add the hand, which will be my small shape. And a lob-sided lighted sided square. Add in the little fingers that we can see here. And then we'll add in the exact same on the other side. Latissimus dorsi into the rear delt, up into this arm. And then you'll just get a little peek of this coming through on the other side here. I'll have a small hand again. So it goes back in space. Gives me that. Cuts across. Comes back down. Gives me quite a bit of the thumb. And then done. Yeah. So... That's kind of how you would stylize that. Now I add in a... Perhaps instead of a sword, she's holding a sledgehammer. For whatever reason, whatever reason, she's a construction site worker or something. I don't know. And she doesn't just use a small sledgehammer. She uses a... 10 ton pounding hammer. For whatever random reason, that is what she's using. Okay. Now, if you wanted to refine this further, you just add a layer, go back one, turn down the opacity. I'm going to turn this other layer off now so I don't use it. Okay. So now I'm going to have... I'm going to have this, which is just a... a brush with some opacity and... Point of precision. Okay, so because this is my medium shape, I'm just going to give this moderate press. Same for this side. The jaw just indicate rather than showing all of it. So this I didn't notice before, but her head kind of tilts sideways as well. So it's going backwards in space, and it's also tilting to the left. So if I want to incorporate incorporate that in my design, it's going to be a bit difficult down the road. Anyway, back to the. This must dorsi in there. I want that to overlap the waist. And I start making this the hip into a thigh. The thigh will overlap the hip as it's a joining muscle here. Same here, so this will overlap this. 
and the rib cage comes down and stretches through. So this works as a dual stretch, I believe. So there's no like real squish this in this pose because she's all of her body's kind of going upwards because she's swinging a sword. Back of that neck. So, for reference for myself, can add in some definition to this jaw. Deciding how far I want things to go. The U will be kind of tilted from underneath. I line there, we just put in one triangle, another triangle, and a curved shape for the forehead that kind of leads into a straight. And because the lips kind of come off the skull, they wrap around, you'll have a little bump here, and then your lip line, same on the other side. No, I was doing this. However, you wouldn't see the bottom plane of that lip. It'd just be that. You'd see the side plane of that. And you get a little bit of curvature here. <laughs> so now I'm going to work my way down to this. So this will overlap. You remember I just said. This rolls down. And then this muscle rolls over. This muscle rolls over to join up to the hip. This one is that hamstring, rolls back into the glute, which is here. And the glute usually gets overlapped by the hamstring in this point of view. And there's another muscle there, a tendon that joins the groin. I'm going to just subtly add in all these overlaps. Now we add in our knee, which, depending on how you want to handle it, can just be two lines or a squiggle, as so. Always important to make sure you have your overlaps to make these things read, though. Now the bone is on the inside, and that's due to the curvature of this bottom shin bone which curves like almost like a shallow C from left to right and then it just kind of sits there and then the tendon and this front bone overlaps the calf muscle and this also overlaps in towards the knee now I'm going to draw like a triangle skinny triangle, curve that, bring a little divot down, so I'm going to make this a wedge, and then I'm going to have my toes coming out of this. So imagine a cylinder going forward in space, just give it a little bit of a toe shape, and repeat. I kind of just, just like to do these squiggly S shapes, and then add in my tube. Okay, a bit too aggressive on that, I'm just curve that up, give me some little joining lines, it's curves, bones too big, just make a just slight adjustment as you go with fine. So in the reference image, it's kind of this tent, this uh, heel of the foot is getting pulled by the weight of the body so you don't see a lot of it. Okay. And now I'm just going to add in some underwear. And this will follow the perspective of these hips so you'll see the underneath plane. 
and then it kind of flattens out. To be honest. Okay, so the bump be here, and this is the thumb side of the hand. This right hand side is the thumb side of the hand. And then you'll see some of the fingers here. And the cylinder, or this. I don't want it to be that big. Up there, bro. And then you just kind of block in that cylinder in the right perspective. I'm going to just do the same for this. Okay. Indication here rather than collaboration. Two little lines there to indicate the jaw is better than what I had. So, from underneath, this just looks like a, the bottom lid just kind of looks like a straight diagonal line. And now this all depends on how big I want to make her, her eye. So, make that the top lid. Make that the eyelashes. Curve this off. And the eyes also kind of just look in this way. Make the eyebrow flat there. Curves this way. Now what type of nose do I want to give her? So the, in the reference it kind of starts here. You see some of the other eyelid here. And it rolls up. And then you draw the wedge shape. Alright, I'm going to make it point a little bit upwards. And then it turns into the triangle shape that I put in. And then the nostril. And just for my sake, I'm just going to add in that little gesture line for the cheekbone. Okay. I'm going to indicate the tip of the rib cage is just one line there. And I just finish this leg. Okay, this overlaps into the kneecap. This rolls down. I'm not gonna go as slow now. I just need to pick up the pace a little bit. Thinking too many just thinking too much about every single decision. And in my kneecap. Pray my overlapping line for the quad. Bump for the hip. Make this overlap. Okay. Now, just gonna quickly. Okay, so as I talked about in one of my videos before, I'm just gonna grab a hard round brush so this becomes easier for me. And I'm just going to use the shift and click. And this is going to get smaller in space. As it goes back. Click escape to get rid of the rotation. Okay. So as you can probably see that this hand here is off a little bit now. 
However, I'm just going to tilt the forearm a touch. And then I'm going to add in my hand. It kind of flattens out over the top. Flattens out here. Flattens out there. And then you'll get some of the fingertips coming over. And that's good enough indication for me. Add in a little bit of shadow. tilt in my canvas so I can get a better rotation for my straight lines. Just try and be quick and fluid with these bottom halves of the cylinder. The top half of the cylinder, which are in opposite perspectives. Okay, now we reset. Add a little bit of this to the sledge. Okay. And that's that same pose. Just pushed. We'll turn off our background layer. Size this up. There you go. Bit of an little indication line there. And I'm going to put another one there for the crotch, towards the crotch. And I think this line's facing the wrong way, just like that. Okay. I'm going to call that one done. So, you're going to add some hair. This has absolutely nothing to do with it, but there you go. You can add some hair in, which comes back behind her. whatever reason okay I think that'll do us for this reference Wednesday it's been a long one I know there wasn't as much life going I just wanted to show you how you can take a pose and slightly exaggerate the proportions you can go even further with this um you can go even further with this in your versions uh, I didn't want to push it too far. This is kind of like more semi-realism than very stylized and pushed. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Peace out.